power with this um, with this set, kind of by feel. Unless you have an RS-232 uh, device, a laptop, mm -hmm. hooked up to the controller, it's never going to tell you you're hot, really. I mean, it's telling it's you, but you're not you paying don't know. attention because yeah. you don't have a laptop. You can't read it that fast as it comes scrolling across the thing. This will go into a cutback mode, and it'll feel like your car is driving fine, and it is driving fine. Mm -hmm. And that you don't have a temperature problem, which you won't have won't. because it's cutting back. This is very elegant. However, what we run into with these electric cars over and over is we're building new vehicles that nobody's driven and we don't know what they're supposed to feel like <laughs> in the first place. I drove this one in cut back with oh, a Kelly a from a voltage cut back setting I had set yeah. for a week. Yeah, we didn't know. I said, you know, this is not that good. Yeah, it didn't feel quite right, but, uh, but who it, knew? It, it's just these electric cars aren't that exciting. I got to fooling around with the Kelly thing, got in there, and almost went through the fence out here when my controller was finally working correctly. We uh, need to maximize what power we can get from this little controller mm -hmm. and from that motor, and we need to maximize their life. The controller is actually the power section is an H-bridge array of a MOSFET metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors, <laughs> if anybody cares. <laughs> uh, MOSFETs MOSFET. are cool up to a certain voltage point. They're, they're um, difficult to deal with above about 250 volts, um, but they, um, they're quite good because their uh, on resistance is in the milliohms now, um, some of them down two to three milliohms. So very low conduction losses in the MOSFETs. Mm -hmm. But at these current levels, it produces a lot of heat. They mount them on a heat sink. And um, if um, you pull enough current through them um, at a hot enough temperature, uh, they will fail. Mm -hmm. yep. So I want this controller yep. to last a long time. And I want to get maximum power. Now, Curtis and I both have the same mission. We want it to right. last a long time. They're mm -hmm. going to cut back my power if they get hot. Right. What's my job in reading into this book? We don't want it to get hot. No. We don't want it to get hot at all. And so I'm going to go to an extreme level. But we're going to talk about some levels you could go to that wouldn't be so extreme. Trace, would you uh, pull me one of those uh, uh, Com Air uh, fans out of the back? This is some heat sink material. Uh, they're talking about mounting this on some flat metal. This right. is cheap. You get it on eBay by the foot. Yeah. <laughs> this is a finned yeah. aluminum uh, machined thing. This is our Thanks. good buddy, the uh, Com Air Rotron. Fan, 235 cubic feet a minute, about two amps. Get a piece of this, turn it upside down, um, put it in a little tray with this fan over here on the side, the um, mm, heat sink of uh, the Curtis is right here. Get enough of this to completely cover that, mount it to this, Put a little fan over here or this way where it blows through those fins. Um, you could uh, even mount it like this. Mm -hmm. You can mount the whole thing upside down. It is the simplest and least expensive solution. Right. And it'll be the yeah. least um, maintenance. Um, it'll uh, cool it pretty well. And mm -hmm. um, it's really the way to do this. Uh, is a good fan. A lot of uh, blow on a finned heat sink um, with the controller on the other side. It worked beautifully. When you start <laughs> trying to put this together, there's some mounting problems yep. Uh, yep. to get all this to work. It gets to be pretty thick. We've got some space considerations mm -hmm. uh, vertically yep. and where we want this under the hump of the Speedster. Um, this would work. We're going to have a fan noise, um, but it's low maintenance, lasts a long time, 
probably would do the job, and um, we're not going to do that then. <laughs> That's right. Why, <laughs> Why not simply so when we can, we can make it we'll, into something we'll complicated and fun? <laughs> That's right. Well, here's why. Water is 3,500 times better at moving heat than air is. That is true. Yeah. Now, yeah, we need some let's, water. Let's talk about heat. What are we talking about here? We're talking about heat right here. It's going to get really hot on the surface right of those there. MOSFETs. Right. They're tied to the heat sink. Yep, they're on there. Quite right. hot. But it's not really a great deal of power. This no. is not a lot of heat like an internal combustion engine. You can't heat your house with this. You can't even heat the car no. with this. No. No. It's very localized, concentrated heat, and what they want us to do is get it mm. off of this unit. And that's what we want to do. I want a water system that will fit this exactly. And what that means is a chill plate. And Brain mm -hmm. and Trace have gotten together with our good buddy, the enormous Polish guy, Lucien. Lucien, yes. At um, <laughs> Cape Precision Machine Shop. <laughs> and they have overdone this so egregiously, I'm embarrassed. It does not need to be all this. But it does need to be something. <laughs> this is two um, plates of aluminum. Um, I got them on eBay. We had to mill them down. If you notice, this, uh, this heat sink plate is quite flat and quite shiny. And we're going to clean that really well. Then we're going to use... We're going to clamp it pretty hard, and uh, you remember I mentioned thermal compound. I found some stuff I really like. This is mostly for electronic circuits, which I guess this it is. It really is, yeah. Uh, we're going to have to use a lot of this, and it's not cheap. Um, it's called Avid Ultra Stick. <laughs> no, it's a, uh, you know, the thermal compound that you use to put CPU in your overclocked uh, PC, <laughs> this isn't it. It isn't thermal grease. It's kind of a little, almost an adhesive um, smear that you put on there that actually works a, a lot better. It makes a lot better thermal contact and transfers heat a lot better. It's kind of a new material. It's called Avid, A-A-V-I-D, Ultra Stick. Uh, part number uh, 031117. A neat, quick grease alternative for high thermal performance. And it's been recommended to me several times by people who really know about this. This is the tits on uh, thermal grease. So we're gonna put that. We have these plates, the surface machined, where they would be very flat and very clean. Mm -hmm. And so the flatter, at a microscopic level, you can get that, the better the heat transfer. The transfer right. And by using this thermal grease to fill in the gaps, you uh, increase that fairly dramatically. Aluminum is a remarkable material. Yeah. Aluminum is so thermally conductive, it's difficult to weld. Uh, it, it's, uh, it does some strange things um, in the presence of temperature. So that's what we're gonna use for a heat sink. Uh, where's the water come in? Um, we're gonna bolt one side of this to this, but we've made a sandwich of two pieces. And these pieces, we have simply uh, had a milling machine, a router, if you will, uh, do a serpentine quarter inch channel through uh, this um, surface of this plate, terminating in some threads. This plate has the exact uh, mirror image of that. If I put them together this way, I wind up with a chill plate with two threaded holes for my fittings, which we're going to use AN6. Uh, AN6. 
with a, a quarter NPT um, thread here and an AN6 uh, thread here, Army, Navy. Army, uh, Navy. The uh, flare um, that will go into here so I can hook up tubing to it. Water will go in one thing, go through the serpentine throughout the plate and out the other one. And that's what a chill plate that's is. Chill plate. We can, can bolt this to the bottom of this and move uh, water through it to remove the heat 